being one with nature. Yesterday we talked about destiny and causality. The integration of the higher, middle and lower levels is the unity of heaven, earth, nature and human. Being ordinary people, we believe we can create our future. As long as we work hard, we'll earn what should belong to us. This is true. It's not your ability but your diligence, ambition and belief in pursuing achievement. This is an inevitable process of life, just like we must get dressed before going out on the street. It's a normal or basic condition. But some people, according to my observation and research, are truly capable. They remember the contents of books from reading just once. Their eyes are like cameras taking snapshots and memorizing the images. For us, even if we snap 100 photos, we won't memorize, getting no results, right? You don't get this capability from cultivation. It's congenital. If you're born with it, you might have done many good deeds or were proficient in self-cultivation in your previous lives. It's like facial appearance, some were born beautiful, others ugly. People like the beautiful ones, however, the ugly ones can't even find a date. This can't be changed. You may want plastic surgery, but an alterable foundation is needed. It's like carving rotten wood, it would collapse under the knife. It's a waste of time and money. So, that is a congenital merit. Some are talented at expressing and presenting. They are born attracting, not seducing. They quickly become popular in school, other kids follow them. Unfortunately, some are the opposite, everyone wants to kick them. Even if they haven't done anything wrong. Not sure if they were reincarnated from a kung fu dummy or punching bag. But people just want to beat them up. Why? It's congenital. Also, some are born good at mathematics. They can quickly learn anything related to calculations. This is also congenital. Let's review the facial features of the emperors in the Qing dynasty. The first one, Nurhachi, from his appearance and imposing manner. In my opinion, he was composed, accurate, sharp and vicious. He took decisive action. He would never fight with just one person, no one dared to fight him. Whoever fought in wars with him would be stunned. After looking at his appearance and aura, you compare the differences between him and other emperors' achievements and values and understand that appearance and ability complement each other. Remember, Nurhachi was the founding emperor of the Qing dynasty. When he was the emperor, he was in Shenyang, a city in northeastern China. He didn't conquer the central plains or Beijing before he died. Then, Hong Taiji ascended the throne, which was passed to Shunji after him. Rumors said that he either died of smallpox or became a monk. Anyway, he abdicated the throne. There must be reasons for the rumors. He might have become a monk. It was a secret. 
Since it was a secret, it's not documented in the imperial records. If you look at his face, you'll feel a different kind of energy. Now take a look at Emperor Kangxi. His ability was comparable to his bloodline, the first emperor Nurhachi. It was humongous. He created world-shaking accomplishments. Among the emperors of that dynasty, he had great achievements and created a lot of political reform. Okay, the next one. Emperor Yongzheng was a very capable ruler and administrator. He was a conscientious executive. He wasn't innovative but a good manager of his family empire and his life. He didn't have to battle or conquer much. As most of the territories had been captured and chaos quelled, his forefathers had done all that, and he succeeded in his middle age. Because Emperor Kangxi lived a long life, after he ascended the throne, he diligently did a great job. Nowadays, many experts and scholars are in the Forbidden City, researching the papers and documents of Emperor Yongzheng. His ministers submitted all kinds of documents for him to review and approve. He might have written tens of millions of words, approving those documents. He was reviewing and writing his approval simultaneously. He worked more than 16 hours every day. We can learn from this emperor. How could his son's generation be so wealthy? Qianlong often traveled south, wrote poetry and songs, and hosted cultural events. Where did the money come from? His dad earned it for him. It was also a time of prosperity and abundance for the civilians. The less fuss the emperor made, the easier his people's lives, got it? The more creative the emperor was, the more hardship for people. New tricks every day. When Qin Shi Huang decided to build the Great Wall, he took a million male laborers to carry out the construction. Unfortunately, nine out of ten didn't return. Even if the emperor just wanted to build a big tomb, hundreds of thousands workers were needed. Some might even be buried alive if they didn't keep the secret. The people were suffering. The better the emperor behaves, the more peacefully his people live. As we mentioned yesterday, Changlong's reign was the most prosperous and glorious time in Qing dynasty. All the praiseworthy achievements and fame were credited to him. That's because his father and grandfather had settled everything. He just needed to manage well, which was not an easy job either. Not everyone was born a good manager of peace and prosperity. He was a talented warrior and scholar with great vision and strategy. When he was small, his intelligence impressed his grandfather. His grandfather said this kid was smarter than some adults in critical times. He was born talented, with spiritual insight. So his grandfather, Emperor Kangxi, said, I want to personally raise and train him to become a great emperor. That's exactly what Kangxi said and did with his grandson, Qianlong. He was taught by the best teachers in the royal palace. He mastered literary ability and military strategy, from which were reflected his establishments and the reformation of his empire civic life, agricultural and industrial production, and even cultural developments were more prosperous and open-minded than in his forefathers' eras. He was an open-minded person. In his time, the royal palace produced many tools, weapons and artworks. He dared to combine the European pieces with his ideas and integrated them into the new productions. This was really great.
Many said that according to his looks and the way he dressed, he must have been very stubborn and conservative. Actually not. He was very open, indeed. Well, the next one was Emperor Jia Qing, the son of Emperor Qianlong. In fact, after Qianlong, starting from Jia Qing's reign, the Qing dynasty was declining. During his time, the royal made vases didn't even have neat and nice patterns. The dragon drawings looked frail. It was worse in the reign of Daoguang. Let's look at his appearance, you'll know this emperor was weaker. The next one was Shengfeng, the ninth emperor. Does everyone know how long Shengfeng lived? About 20 to 30 years. Then the next emperor was Tongzi. He was only 19, very young. In his portrait, he didn't even have a beard. This young kid passed away at 19. Next was the 11th emperor, Guangxu. He looks pretty good from his portrait, right? The 12th emperor, Xuantong, we all know as Puyi. They got weaker and weaker. In Puyi's reign, the Qing dynasty nearly collapsed. Right, so from the looks of these emperors, we can see those who had great achievements or big accomplishments, were born with talent and a strong bloodline, right? Also, you can see a few of them who were not as talented, or who didn't even live a long life before they were killed. Whether they were assassinated or died of illness, I think the key was a lack of energy. Let's combine their ability and appearance and compare with their contribution to society and country. We'll learn lots of things, especially this. We can't compete with those who were born with natural endowment. This is the incredible state of great creation that occurs in the human world. We were born different, and it is the law of nature. According to Buddha Dharma, it's from the cause and effect of previous lives. According to the way of heaven, each has their own destiny. He was fated to govern the country, or he was fated to start a war, right? Or, saving this group of people was his destiny. Everybody, especially those with a great mission, has a life purpose to fulfill. Some who collaborated with the king died after their mission was completed. It happened in a few generations of kings. They fought alongside the king and helped establish the empire. They had to die after that. In terms of the macroscopic view, they were there with their skills, which were used by the king. To seize and build his political power. This is the profound theory of the way of heaven. Why is it called a profound theory? Because it's incredible. The truth of it is hard to explain with ordinary logical thinking. But if I tell you frankly, you'll understand that it was their mission. We're born different, this is the law of nature. In terms of Buddhism, its previous causalities, according to the way of heaven, each of us has our own destiny. After we've learned these truths, being ordinary people in society, how shall we apply them? First, I'll help you to understand and travel around the world. 
Also, to remind you that the kind of attitude and vision you hold can help you to get along and be one with the world. As you're watching the video, spring is here. The little sprouts are slowly germinating in the soil and growing gradually. I'm experiencing the process by visualizing myself as a little sprout. How would I feel being inside the soil? When I break through the earth, what kind of feeling should I have? I should be feeling relaxed and free. Finally, I stick my head out of the soil. I like the sunshine. I enjoy the air. I like this world. I am trying so hard to grow taller with the other sprouts around me. Hey, come on. Let's bathe in the spring breeze. You can see their smiles from their color. You just can't hear their laughter. I seem to have heard the sprouts laughing like cheerful children. I can feel that they're running, playing and jumping. Each little sprout has a face, just like a laughing child. I am feeling the beautiful sky. It is such a blue sky, and I am one with it. I am not small. I am the sky. The little sprout becomes the sky. I enjoy this world. Although I don't see the sunshine, it's shining on me. Rays of light with heat entering into my body. I'm feeling happy, wonderful, pleasant. When the breeze blows, I feel like I'm flying. Riding on the wind, I'm soaring in the sky. What a wonderful feeling. If you can spend some time with something you like, and sense that you're one with it, you'll realize something you've never felt before. Some profound people, in this special state, could have perceived some kind of message and be inspired or even revealed some very useful information. Deeply integrating our thoughts with people and matters is the same method used by many great masters in the past to reveal mysteries. To see through heaven's secret, people's minds and intentions, and to obtain benefits. As we mentioned yesterday, there was a big 8.5 magnitude earthquake in Haiyuan, Ningxia in 1920. A Taoist held a date in one hand and a peach in the other, while yelling Zhao date and Dao peach, which has the same pronunciation as run away in Chinese. Why would such a Taoist hold a date and peach to help others? Maybe because he didn't have any family or loved ones. His mind was pure and calm enough to merge into oneness with the world. And so he could perceive big changes in the world such as the catastrophe. Therefore, he was there to help people. He could observe, hear and capture those signals. And thus, he could be there to advise the people. In this I am it state, we receive lots of inspirations. All the philosophers of ancient China experienced this state. Almost all of them applied the I am it or I am nature merging together state. 
After such deep experiences of being one with the sky, being one with things, being one with emptiness, being one with consciousness, or even being one with the deities, being one with water, being one with trees and being one with mountains, Naturally through this integration process, the differences between us and these substances, things, people and matters will become less and less. And this process brings humans significant healing effects mentally and physically. If you have such a visualization for five minutes, all your fatigue and worries from the week will quickly be eliminated. When seeing a mountain, think, I am the mountain and the mountain is me. Slowly and deeply, I'm feeling the beauty, peace, stability and magnitude. Of lingering and being one with heaven, earth, sun and moon. Our heart will broaden. We'll see higher and farther. When we're standing on the top of the mountain overlooking the world, we can see farther, think further and live longer. Let us review. I am the mountain. The mountain is me. I am the tree. The tree is me. I am the grass. The grass is me. Another metaphor that we haven't used before. When I see the old cow, I say, I am the old cow. The old cow is me. When I see a puppy, I am the puppy. The puppy is me. Many may think that they're being scolded. If you love the world, you'll know that you're not being scolded but loved. If you think that way, even the dog won't bite you. However, if you saw the dog and started yelling, the dog would bite you. The same if you yelled at the cow, the cow would kick you. These animals may look low class to you, but their instincts are very strong. Generally, they're calm and loving, unless they're irritated. They won't hurt you when they are calm and feeling the love. How lovely it is when you love the world. Many animals have saved people's lives. There was a family who'd raised a big dog, they were affected by the Sichuan earthquake. I don't know the breed of dog, it was a large local dog. This family was nice and treated it very well. They fed the dog the food they ate. They took good care of the dog and would never ignore it. One day, the owner was drunk, too drunk even to walk steadily. The dog tried to drag him out of the house. Though he was drunk, he wondered why. He was too drunk to move himself. The dog was still dragging him and barking desperately. To wake up his wife and children. The dog was trying hard to drag him out. Then, his wife came out and yelled at the dog. Why are you dragging him out? The dog kept dragging him. Suddenly, the wife realized something. 
We are nice to the dog. He wouldn't hurt us. There must be a reason for this. Then they pulled him out together. When they were about 100 feet away from the house, the house collapsed. It was the Wenchuan earthquake, and their dog saved their lives. These animals can't talk, but their spiritual intuition is especially strong. So if we love this world and all sentient beings, needless to say, if we are one with them, if we observe and listen to them, it's not difficult for us to discover a lot of rules that bring us tremendous help. Of course, we're not expecting that it can bring us back from death, but we'll be helped in many meaningful ways, such as the drugs inspection at airport customs. They mostly use dogs and sometimes pigs, because dogs and pigs have a keen sense of smell. Anyone here born in the year of the dog? You can practice your sense of smell. The piggies too. In one of the European countries, there is a fungus that grows in the soil. I forget its name. It's matsutake or truffle. Truffle. It's a fungus with an incomparable fragrance and medicinal value. Right, the wild-grown ones are extremely expensive. In France, the local people use a black piggy to look for truffles. The piggy can find the truffles by their fragrance. Yes, they just know how. For humans, even if our nose grows longer, we don't have a special sense of smell. Today, we have talked generally about psychological state. Next, I am the sky, and the sky is me. I am emptiness, emptiness is me. For humans, we also have, I am you, you are me. Try to realize why I would say this. How would you become me? It actually is a certain way of being. A habit of thinking and a psychological state. When we have such a mentality, we are loving the world. Because the world is me, and who would hurt oneself? No matter what, regardless of who you are, when you're born into this world, you can't stay away from it, right? You should get along peacefully with the world with such a mentality. This mindset is also a correction and healing for ourselves. Some people have said, I have depression. I'm afraid to meet people. But with that mentality, you won't be afraid or nervous anymore. Others are in a worse condition, say, they like to cheat people. Cheating others is an easier way to get money than working hard in a job. If you merge with the world and sentient beings, you will no longer harm others. I want you to experience that. We are interchanging and being one with each other. I am him, especially his goodness. I am him. I appreciate his goodness. I feel his goodness. I experience his goodness. And I start to care for him, love him and protect him. Yet, it's not necessarily the love between lovers. Of course, such love is also inclusive. In this world, people are affectionate. Besides the affection among family and blood relatives, there is love. Other than these affections, we might not be sure if we have other feelings. The friendship among your schoolmates is sometimes deeper than among brothers and sisters. 
between you and your co-workers. The affection may not be less than with your siblings. The neighbors that live next to you are also very nice to you. All these connections are affection. Relationship is created when people are together and interacting. Between humans and objects, objects seem not to be living things. But with our houses, tables, furniture, cell phones, jewelry, or even brand name cosmetics, there are special feelings involved. Some don't want to throw away the clothes they've worn for 10 years, until finally the clothes are worn out. Why don't they want to throw away the old clothes? It's not because of the value of the clothes but the feelings, the emotional value. It's not that you can't afford new clothes, but you cherish the old ones. What makes humans lovely is the feelings we have. We are connected to the whole world with our feelings. Because we have feelings, we feel life is joyful, meaningful and enjoyable. We used to share our emotions and loving kindness with our friends. If we suddenly disappeared from our circles of friends and family, others may think that we're sick or depressed or autistic. Why is it called a sickness? Because there are symptoms and they are outside of normal. Nobody in this world can isolate oneself from these interlocking relationships. It would be very hard for one single person to survive by himself. These relationships connect us with the entire world. Thus, we have feelings and love, which are meaningful, joyful and powerful. This is the most important. Back in the prehistoric era, it was difficult for a man to fight with a beast. Even to deal with a wild male goat would be hard for a strong man. Unless you have a gun. Otherwise, using a bow and arrow to capture the wild goat would be difficult. It runs very fast. And it could generate a few hundred kilograms of force. That would be unbearable for one man. What can we do? We have to work as a team. Say, everybody has a task and helps to set up traps and prepare tools. Then we can capture one or more wild goats for our food. Human beings are not as strong as tigers, panthers or lions. One person can't capture a buffalo by himself. We don't have powerful limbs, sharp teeth or paws. What should we do? We have to put our powers together. Humans can only survive in groups. When we can be one with heaven, earth, nature, people and friends. As in I am him and he is me, and in such spiritual communication. Gradually, we can change almost everything. First, the interpersonal relationships. Second, your communication skills. Third, you broaden your understanding and experience of all matters. Fourth, receiving spiritual inspirations. With the attitude of being one with heaven, earth, humans and all beings, we'll enjoy the following benefits. 1. Improved interpersonal relationships. 2. Enhanced communication skills. 3. Broader understanding of all matters. 4. Greater spirituality and inspirations. In ancient China, the Buddha called himself a cultivator. What was he cultivating? Some said he tried to reveal the secret of heaven. Such a secret is not for just anybody to reveal. Only those who merge with the world and understand the rules of the world can.
If you ignore the world and its rules, how can you understand it? Not only should we take care of it, but also feel for it. So, with this attitude, we are merged with the world. And we get more help. After the integration, I want to add one more thing, a compassionate heart. If you were a robber and you wanted to be one with the mountain, but all your thoughts were robbery, harm and destruction, you had better not go up the mountain, otherwise you'd be hurt. You may encounter serious danger. Many accidentally died while they were hiking, picking Chinese herbs or driving. The mountain stays as it is, but the people lose their lives. Once I saw two cars pass each other on a slippery mountain road, and one of them drove off the cliff. It was about 200 meters down onto big stones. The car that crashed was on fire immediately. The people inside should have been dead. So, I must remind everyone. You have to make a choice first, if you want to learn from me. It's very simple. You have to choose if you want to be a good man or a bastard. I was chatting with someone who was well-educated. He said, please teach me how to learn Buddhadharma. I looked at him and said, learning Buddhadharma is very easy. First, do you want to be a good man or a bad man? He said, a master once told me that humans are originally kind in nature. I said, that's nonsense. I've met some small kids who enjoy hurting others. How could hurting others be considered kindness? We've also met a few old ladies who were swindlers. Of course, there are real nice elderly people and kind kids. Some people are bad regardless of their age. What does human nature as kind mean? Are they polluted later? My conclusion is humans are both good and bad in nature. As long as you're a human, you're born with kindness and viciousness. If you're born to be kind, what else do you need to cultivate? It's not necessary for people to preach and practice dharma. You should be well rewarded, right? However, this is not the reality. What should we do with our kindness and viciousness then? So we need to make a choice to determine whether to be a good or bad person. If you want to be a good man, you have to identify the things you should not do. Like the five basic precepts that Buddha set for his disciples. For example, we start with no killing, no stealing, no misconduct. Also, no false speech and no alcohol. We have eight precepts including no drugs, no gambling, no eating snakes, turtles or dogs, that we must follow. We must know what to do and what not to do. Killing is definitely prohibited. If you want to have freedom and choice, you must control your behaviors. These controls have nothing to do with religion. As a human, whatever goal you're pursuing, there is a way. The way is to follow the law of heaven. In the ancient world, there were lots of robbers and thieves. 
不能抢，no killing and no profaning. They picked young or middle-aged rich men as their targets. They could not do big harm to these people because that wasn't allowed. If their members violated the rules, they would be killed. Even the gangsters have to follow their gang's rules. Such rules or guidelines are needed. Whenever there are two or more people working together as a team, this also applies to a family. If a happy couple does not have guidelines or rules by which to manage their family, they are not being rational. Say, they take turns paying for dinner, that's relatively rational. People call it go Dutch, right? They can set up responsibilities for each other to fulfill. This way may be more effective. When they have kids, they need to revise their plans. From the baby stage to the toddler stage and beyond. They have to teach the child to respect their parents and grandparents. And to follow the rules. Let them understand the different ranks of people and behave appropriately. If kids don't behave appropriately, it could bring them hard times in life. If a spoiled kid does something wrong and even slaps his parents, whose fault would it be? The parents' fault because they didn't set up rules to guide the kid. Once you have a purpose for an action, there should be guidelines to control the behaviors and regulate the proposed action. These rules apply to physical and mental behaviors. If a family of more than two members doesn't set up guidelines or rules, Problems might develop. You don't realize the problems until the kids are grown up. You'll wonder why they become scoundrels and do bad things without shame. Until you realize these are the problems caused by the parents. And, since the parents don't set good examples, their kids will follow. If the father dares to kill or gamble, the kid will dare to follow or even worse. I have seen so many of these cases. It broke my heart, but I had no way to stop it because the fathers did the same. Finally, their kids live out the same consequences. Being young parents, they are still big kids themselves. Their bad habits and behaviors will influence their kids. If the parents fail to set up a higher standard to regulate their kids, don't expect their kids to behave appropriately when they are adults. Ancient sages said, it's the father's fault for not teaching his child well. It's the fault of the parents that they brought up an indecent kid. It is also a shame for the entire family. What about in a corporation? In China, it's popular for good friends to make a vow and become allied brothers. They're so close to each other and so they want to be brothers. Ancient China gave us a story about three men who vowed in a peach garden. They were Lu Bai, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei. They made a pledge of fraternal loyalty in the peach garden. And they became brothers. 
Their relationship was even deeper than that of biological brothers. Then came a question, whose orders should they follow? Was there a rule to follow? Who was the oldest? Lu Bai. The other two brothers had to listen to and follow Lu Bai's orders. These two brothers were willing to. Although they were skilled at fighting and bad-tempered, they still listened to Lu Bai. Not only was it their fate and destiny, from the point of view of these men, they were happy to become brothers and follow the agreement among them, taking control of their behaviors. Whenever there were differing ideas among them, the oldest had the say. Any group of two or more members must set their purposes and goals and make an agreement to regulate their behaviors. When a person loses his belief and pursuit, he is also losing control. He is more evil than the demons. He becomes the demon. He doesn't realize that to harm is a sin and a shame. He feels happy when he hurts you and makes you feel miserable. Just like the people in the ancient world who liked to kill. Slaughtering pigs and lambs every day was their way of earning a living. If they didn't see blood from killing, they weren't happy. People who are habitual drinkers may feel mission incomplete if they don't drink before going to bed. Finally he remembers and drinks a couple of glasses, then goes to bed. Once a behavior becomes a habit, it's difficult to change. If a bad behavior becomes a habit, that means harming becomes a habit too. If you got used to making yourself happy by bringing pain and harm to others, what would your future be? You should know that bringing harm to others causes harm to the self. Many prisoners are smart and wise. They are not stupid or slow-witted. They can run their small business and develop it into a listed company. But they're still imprisoned and some for the rest of their life. It's not because they're stupid and unwise, it's due to negative pursuits. We must have goals and beliefs to pursue. Talking about belief, it's a choice between good and bad. When I have the belief in being a good man and pursue accordingly, my life journey will be firm, steady, appropriate, practical and secure. If we just blindly chase after benefits, we'll get hurt because of it. Why do people with a high mental state engage in spiritual pursuits? A correct and noble spiritual pursuit will not suffer harm. Because it's not after money, treasure, or erotic desire. Therefore, there is no harm but only the benefits. Such a noble, reverent integration with nature. The deep experience and spiritual realization will bring us so much help. Here is another thing. When we are not a genius, how shall we take care of matters in ourselves? To make up for our shortcomings? Through learning and cultivating, we can obtain knowledge and abilities. 
和修来的嘛。所以给大家讲的是这个部分哈。The key is, if you want to obtain knowledge, skills, and even wisdom, the most important thing is to decide on pursuing the good or the bad. After choosing to be good, our pursuit will not be so low and simple. Our pursuit will be more noble-minded. We have to control our behaviors even more strictly. So that our life will be more peaceful and disciplined. We could be more beneficial to the world, family, society, and ourselves. I have divided the benefits into three to four aspects. Firstly, we've learned to merge with nature and be one with it. I am nature. Nature is me. It's also about caring for and protecting the environment. Or even creating something which brings benefits to the environment. Secondly, it's beneficial to society and areas related to you. Thirdly, to the organization or group that you are working for. You will bring harmony among colleagues and very positive contributions. Fourthly, your family. It is your hub of affection which shall receive the greatest benefits. If these benefits are delivered, you're the richest and happiest person on earth. I've made these clear for you. If you find them meaningful, it's worthwhile for you to contemplate. Noble pursuits brings these benefits. 1. Loving and kind environment. 2. Harmonious community. 3. Positive contribution to workplace. 4. More harmonious family. We should have heard people say, humans are the most intelligent of all beings. This land belongs to my family. My family bought this mountain. I can use anything as I wish. Why should I be grateful? If humans are the most intelligent of all beings, I can freely and relentlessly use all the resources here. Since you are working for me, I can treat you as slaves. Anytime, as I wish. Well, my feeling is that what we want to fulfill. I want to make it clear again. Although we may be entitled legally and financially to own a certain part of the world's resources, we must have a heart of reverence to love and protect it and care for it with gratitude. We are not the overlords of this world. We don't speak like a demon. You have to give me this. I must cut down this tree because I am its master. I must kill this pig because I'm the owner. I raised it. We need to see and treat this world with love. Owning something doesn't mean you can do anything to it. We cannot become the overlord of the world or any kind of villain. We want to be a bodhisattva to nature, the community and colleagues. I'm also a bodhisattva at home. For myself, I should always have adequate and perfect compassion. We can enjoy, respect, and love this world with gratitude. 
爱护这个世界。我们对这个世界怀有敬畏之心。Only with a grateful and caring heart can we be free and at ease. 呵护之心，我们才能自在。Say when you go back to your company, you love your colleagues and boss. 爱你这些同事们，爱你的老板。I don't mean having love affairs, but universal love. 去热爱的时候， your boss pays your salary, and you should help him and the company to develop. You're also earning the living for your family. It's gratitude, compassion, and love. It's also a heartfelt exchange. Not just exchanging labor for money, it's spiritual. Such exchange is an integration. How wonderful! You'll definitely bring prosperity to your company and be good friends with your colleagues. You'll receive less negativity, such as biting sarcasm and challenges. You'll have many good friends. You can keep your career and create achievements. This is the most important, right? With your family. If you're having the love that is, I'm him and he is me. How harmonious and happy your family would be. Imagine that when your husband comes home, you hug him and say, Oh, honey, I missed you so much. Dinner is ready. How thrilled he would be. He might be tired and full of stress, pain and complaints. But the negative emotions would be released. With the warmth, love and gratitude you offer. His stress and pain instantly disappear as if he took some replenishing remedy. He is happy and energized like a soaring dragon. No more pain or fatigue. What we gain is joy and luck. Our children will become intelligent. They won't worry you but love you and have good careers and skills. They'll also have nice dispositions and professions with good incomes, right? Even their children will be very good. You just relax and feel happy. So these benefits are actually making us a better future. That's why I'm telling you that these benefits are waiting for you. Our purpose is to help people suffer less. I hope you learn and understand well and are inspired. When we use such an exchange with universal love and compassion, to be one with the world, then, like my master told me when I was small, we are stars flickering with soft brightness in the sky. Merging into the starry galaxy and being one with the universe. How amazing it is! The soft twinkling brightness as your compassionate love. Merging with so many twinkling stars into such a grand galaxy. How wonderful it shall be! What an enjoyable life it is. All the stars are glowing with the light of compassion and universal love. Each star is delighted and sweet. Joyful, relishing and at ease. What kind of scene is that? Isn't that the highest state of life? This is a metaphor of humanity and heaven being connected. When we have this kind of love, our world is changed. When we have this kind of love, we 
will be happily and bravely reaching out to our friends and relatives, giving them a hug and saying from the bottom of our heart, I love you. And for those who have done wrong in the past, tell your elders, loved ones and your mother, I was wrong. I love you. Give her a hug and bow with your palms together. You'll realize instantly you're drifting to the brilliant and wonderful sky, glowing the light of compassion and universal love with all the stars. To the fellow practitioners who work and practice with you, give them a hug and say wholeheartedly, I love you. Today you want to be a compassionate and kind person. Now you may want to bow to heaven, right? Whether you're palm to palm or gesturing to heaven and earth, I vow to heaven that I want to be a compassionate and kind person. All deities, heaven and earth, be my witnesses. From now on, you will start to love this world. The gods and all beings in this world will care for you. Gradually, you'll know it. If you love the waters, you'll never drown. You love this mountain, and you'll benefit with longevity from it. We can slowly accumulate merits, virtues and wisdom. Then our life will be able to merge into the starry sky in the future. When your compassion is a certain level, you'll realize you are that star. And you'll get the inspiration, that star is me. Maybe in the future, you are indeed that star. After tens of billions of light years, still existing there. According to the Buddhist scriptures, we exist in this world in various forms. How beautiful that is. I think, if one day I am going to die, I want to be a star in the sky, I should be quite happy. It is not easy to achieve that, indeed. Anyway, I will be very happy. Because you love the world with the light of compassion and universal love. Not only humans can see and understand this star. In such a huge world, there is a multitude of sentient beings. So, when we revere, love and care for this world, we can merge with this world organically. With this kind of love, you won't feel pain even if you fall on the ground. And this world, Say, if you don't love this world, you'll stumble into tables or trip on rocks, hurt your feet and break your shoes. If you love this world, the rocks and tables seem to hide away from your feet. They give you the way so you won't kick them. It's very strange. Only with compassionate love, can we always be bestowed with compassionate wisdom and our hearts be pure? Then your actions would be very clear, composed and safe. We talk about the way of nature. What does nature feel like? At this moment, when I see nature, it's a beautiful scene. The spring breeze is blowing, flowers and grasses are covering the earth. Bees and butterflies are accompanying the white, yellow and red little flowers that are swaying in the wind. With a light fragrance, the wind is blowing all over the world. Everybody's heart is feeling happy, healthy and peaceful.
Such joy and beauty make everybody's dreams come true. How beautiful! This world is totally controllable with our heart. Once our behaviors change, if our psychological behaviors are changed, our actual behaviors will then be changed. Our language and actions will become free, calm, gentle, appropriate, and more efficient. Our destiny, living environment and the way will become the profound theory we hold in our hands. Just like I have already mastered the essentials and secrets of the world, we learn about this world and the natural environment because we want to find a better way for survival, achievement, happiness. And great enlightenment. It's not necessarily about being great, but at least being enlightened. That would be good enough. The world would be very beautiful. Wars would disappear. And many diseases would be naturally healed. How wonderful. Just thinking of that makes me feel delighted and joyful. The status and height of our mentality determine our actions. Our actions bring the effectiveness. That is the merits and virtues which determine our future destinies. We were not born with a well-developed brain. We might not have been born with managerial skills or good looks. But after making these efforts, we can be more talented than the talented ones and greater than the all-time greats. At least I can live more happily and comfortably than the greats. We have what the greats haven't got. We might have a joyful environment for our life, family and work. How wonderful it is. I can enjoy such happiness at every moment. So I really hope that all the friends who have listened to this teaching will gain some meaningful and useful references that make your life better. Many can think of some specific obstacles and troubles. I just want to tell you not to worry about these small problems. If you have absorbed something of what I've said, the more you have absorbed, the wider the gap you can stride across. You can deal with the troubles easily and instantly. Nothing can hinder you. Some people say, I meditate to gain the greatest freedom in life. Yes, it starts right here. When troubles can't hinder you, you'll always find a way to stride over them. That's the great happiness and freedom in life. Let your compassionate light of wisdom shine from your heart and radiate throughout the universe. Enjoy life while moving forward. I want to send this talk to all my friends today and in the future. Thank you, Master.